This afternoon, I was reading Sarah Bell's blog post about a new font that she has designed in the spirit of old USGS topo maps. And I'll provide a link to that in the description. But I saw this and I thought, gosh, that's a beautiful area of interest demarcation. I want to take a closer look. So it's Evolution Valley from the Mount Goddard USGS topo quad 1912. So I'll open the Living Atlas and I'll search for USGS Historical Topographic Map Explorer, which I'll open. And it was covering Evolution Valley in California. So let's go here and I'll zoom in a bit to the center. Step one is to click a location to see what's available. And I'll click around until I see the Goddard. Topo quad in the timeline below in 1912. Boom, there it is. Okay, good. Gotcha. Okay, I found it. And now I can really get a close look the symbology used for this area of interest. So it's a, about a 45 degree red hatch fill that is inwardly facing and it's given a perimeter stroke of a long dash, a medium gap, and then a dot in black. Let's see if we can recreate this in ArcGIS Pro. So I've got Pro fired up here, and I've got just the topographic style base map there, just to give us a little bit of context. And I'll add a layer of the US National Parks. So I'll open Add Data, I'll search within the Living Atlas, and I'll say, show me National Parks. And I'll choose this one. And I'm getting national forests, state parks, and national parks, but I just want national parks. So I'll do a definition query. I double clicked on this. I'll do a new definition query where the type is. Now I know that D83 is the ID for national parks. Hit apply and hit OK. And that has whittled it down to just the national parks. Let's find, well, we can find. Kings Canyon National Park. Is this King? No. One of these is King Canyon. Kings Canyon National Park. Okay. Let's style Kings Canyon National Park in a similar manner to what we saw in the 1912 USGS Topo Quad. So I'll click on this symbol to open the symbology panel. I'll look at the properties and see what's in there by default. Okay, by default we have a solid stroke and a solid fill. Let's, instead of a solid fill, give this a hatched fill. Okay, good. Uh, and this is actually looking pretty familiar. We just need to give it that deep crimson color. I'll go with Tuscan Red. And I'll hit Apply. Oh, I was doing that National Forests. My bad. National Parks. Okay. Let's redo this real fast. Hatched fill, Tuscan red, apply, and there it is. Now, how do we get it to only show the donut version of that? Well, you can come into the structure, and I'll add an effect called donut, which is the tastiest of all symbol effects. And the donut effect control how deeply it renders. I'll hit apply. And I would like to dig into this pattern a bit and reduce the separation. Okay, so we've got a symbology that's reminiscent of that topo quad. Let's give this even more depth. And I like to use round and accurate because I think it just looks better. Okay, 
Now let's take a look at the line. How do we add some dash work that looks like this? Okay. So this is black. It was about, let's see, a two point weight. And the dash effect is in here by default. But by default, it's just a line, which is nice, you know. And I'll choose a dash from the dash type. See how it's five space five? That means five pixels on, five pixels off. This is how you determine your dash template. And I'll give it something really long, like 40 pixels on. And I'll say, golly, what, what did that look like? About 10 pixels off. And then I'll say two pixels on. Let's give it four pixels on. 10 pixels back off again. And then it'll loop back to this 40 pixels on. There we go. We've got a long dash, medium gap, and then a dot. Somewhat in the manner of the 1912 USGS Topoquad style.